Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be looking at 15 uh, scenario based interview questions that you can expect as part of your uh, Terraform. Now, whether you are preparing for an interview uh, where you're showing experience, you can definitely expect expect scenario based questions um, in terms of your Terraform. So in this session, we will be covering 15 uh, scenario based questions that you can uh, definitely expect as part of your uh, interview. So these questions are your real world uh, questions that uh, you can expect in terms of your Terraform. So before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. So the first scenario based question we have is you have an existing infrastructure on AWS and uh, you want to use Terraform to manage it. How would you? import these resources into your terraform configuration so basically uh, we already have some infrastructure let's say which was created manually now we want to start managing that as well by making use of your terraform so how can we achieve that now for that we can make use of this uh, command called terraform import command so this will help us to import your existing resources and then Terraform can start uh, managing that. So uh, with this, ideally you'll have to write a dummy configuration file uh, and then you will need to run this Terraform import command. So this is the syntax and here is an example command that you can use. So Terraform import the resource type and your local name. So this will be in the uh, uh, configuration file that you would have written in advance and then the uh, instance id so let's say you're you're importing an ec2 instance you'll need to pass, pass that instance id and uh, terraform will basically update the state file with this information and it will start managing these resources for us so with this terraform import command we'll have to import individual resources we cannot import multiple resources but we can make use of your terraform import command for that the next scenario based question we have is you're working with multiple environments let's say you have dev prod and then so on and you want to avoid duplicating your code so how would you structure your terraform configurations to achieve code uh, reusability so this is where we can make use of your terraform modules so terraform modules mainly helps with your uh, code reusability so you can write it once and then we can start calling it any number of times we want which um, uh, basically promotes your code reusability all right so with this it gives you a code reusability as well as your code maintainability and then when we are calling these modules we can uh, parameterize it based on the different environments we have so if you are executing for the dev you can pass the parameters accordingly and if you are executing it for prod you can pass the parameters accordingly so terraform modules is what we can implement for this the next scenario based question we have is describe a situation where you might need to use the terraform remote backend and what are the advantages that it offers in state management now we know that your terraform uh, maintains a state file which is basically the information about all the resources it manages so uh, we can make use of your terraform uh, remote backends to store these state files in a remote location so instead of storing the state files on the local machine we can push it in a remote location a common location which is accessed by multiple people so we have lots of options available so we have s3 buckets we have azure storage we can also use hashicorp provided option which is console to uh, store our state files uh, remotely now what, what advantage it provides so one it provides you with collaboration so multiple people can work with it it provides for you with the option to share your state file as well as locking your state file so when one person is doing some operations the state file will be logged and it will not allow any operations from other users. The next scenario based question we have is you need to create a highly available architecture in AWS using Terraform. Explain how would you implement an auto scaling groups with uh, load balancing. So with this will basically creating the uh, resource block with the respective resource type. So if you want to create a auto scaling group, so here I just have a snippet, an example code. So AWS underscore auto scaling underscore group. So this is the resource type we'll be using and then we'll be filling in the details. And um, in terms of your uh, load balancing, we can create a load balancer. So here AWS underscore LB, that will be the resource type. And then we'll have to also uh, make sure that the instances um, uh, that we are creating are part of your load balancers and your auto scaling groups which will ensure a uh, distributing of your traffic efficiently all right so whenever we talk about making your applications highly available auto scaling groups and load balancer is what we have so we can make use of your terraform to create these resources 
The next question we have is your team is adopting a multi cloud strategy and you need to manage resources on both AWS and Azure using Terraform. So, how do you structure your Terraform code to handle this? Now, we know that your Terraform supports multi cloud platforms, so we can use Terraform to create infrastructure on uh, multiple cloud platforms. In this case, let's say your AWS and Azure. So, we can provide multiple uh, provider blocks in the same configuration file. So, here, for example, if you see I have a, a provider block for AWS, I have a provider block for Azure, I have a provider block for uh, Google Cloud. Okay, so we can define multiple uh, provider blocks in the same configuration file and then we will need to define the resources accordingly within each of these uh, provider blocks so if i'm create if i want to create resource for aws i'll be defining the resources here for azure i'll be providing the resource here and then so on the next question we have is you want to run specific scripts after provisioning your resources with terraform so how would you achieve this and what provisions uh, might you use so when we talk about your provisioners in Terraform, we have a uh, local exec and your uh, remote exec. We can use this to execute any scripts or commands on your local machine as well as your uh, remote machines. Like, you know, let's say you're launching an EC2 instance, you want to run some commands, we can make use of your remote exec for that. Now, uh, we'll, we'll generally be specifying these provisioners within your resource block. So for example, here, I have the resource block and then within the resource block, we will be defining the provisioner. So here is the remote exec where I'm running some inline commands. So first I'm given execute permission and then I'm uh, executing that script. And here I have the connectivity. So your, your Terraform needs to establish the connectivity. So we are providing the connectivity information here. So Terraform will use this connectivity information, connect to that instance and then execute these commands for us. Okay. The next question we have is you're dealing with sensitive information such as API keys in your Terraform configuration. What approach would you take to manage this securely? So it is always recommended that we don't hard code any uh, sensitive information within your configuration file. So we can either make use of your environment variables or we can make use of your external files to store this sensitive data. So we should never uh, keep this data in the configuration files. We should always uh, uh, make sure we are keeping it in a secure location. We can also consider using HashiCorp Vault for centralized secret management. So if you're on AWS, uh, we can definitely consider using the secrets manager where we can store all our secrets and then uh, we can start fetching that uh, information uh, in your Terraform by making use of your data source. The next question we have is describe a scenario where you might need to use Terraform workspaces and how would you structure a project to take advantage of them? So, Terraform workspaces can be used whenever you want to use uh, a single configuration file for multiple environments. Okay, so that's where we can make use of your uh, workspaces. So let's say we have a config file and I want to execute the same config file for my different different environments. So let's say for prod, for dev, QA, uh, sys and then UAT. Okay, so I want one single file, but then I want to execute it um, environment wise. Now that's where we can make use of your uh, workspace. So for each of these environment, we can create your workspace, which is nothing but a copy of this um, uh, config file. And each of this workspace will maintain its own uh, state file. So when we, when I execute the config file in the respective workspaces, it will get executed in the respective um, environment. So this is where we can make use of your workspaces. The next question you have is you have made changes to your Terraform configuration and now you want to preview the execution plan before applying the changes. How would you do this? So Terraform provides us with a command for this. So we have this command called Terraform plan, which we can use to um, review the execution plan as to what exactly your Terraform is changing or what, ex what actions my Terraform is uh, going to take when I execute the configuration file. So this provides us with a detailed overview of the changes that uh, Terraform will apply when I execute that uh, configuration code. So we can make use of your Terraform plan for this. The next question we have is your team has decided to adopt GitOps practices for managing infrastructure with Terraform. How would you integrate Terraform with version control systems like uh, uh, Git? So like any version control system, Git is also a version control system that we can use. And like how, like how we maintain all our code, we can also maintain our Terraform configuration files on uh, GitHub in this case, Git or GitHub. So uh, we can maintain different, different versions of your code and we can start managing the uh, code uh, using this uh, GitHub. So we can also leverage branching strategy for 
different different environments and we can follow a GitOps uh, workflow for uh, change. So basically, um, we can start pushing our code to uh, GitHub and start maintaining branching strategy that we want to follow to uh, uh, depending on the environments that you have been working on. The next question we have is, you need to manage the infrastructure secrets such as your database passwords uh, in your Terraform configuration. So what method or provider more might you use? So like we already discussed, it is always recommended that we should not keep our uh, uh, sensitive data within a uh, uh, Terraform config file. So we'll have to make use of external data source or we'll have to use a secret manager to maintain our sensitive data. Okay, so secrets manager could be the service that we have in AWS or you can make use of your HashiCorp vault to store your sensitive data. So avoid hard coding your secrets in configuration. So it's never recommended to hard code your uh, secrets within the configuration file. It's always a risk. If the code gets exposed on a public repo, so anyone can see those uh, sensitive data. So we should never be hard coding the data. The next question we have is your team wants to ensure that the infrastructure is consistently provisioned across multiple environments. How would you implement a consistent environment configuration? So Again, for this, we can make use of your Terraform modules, which uh, helps us to make our code uh, uh, reusable. So let's say, for example, you have an EC2 instance and this instance needs to be launched in your uh, dev, UAT and prod environment. Now, we can make use of the same code by calling the Terraform modules, by calling the Terraform modules to uh, execute the configuration file on the respective environment. So module abstracts your complexity and it mainly promotes your code consistency so we'll have the same piece of code but then the variables will uh, change based on the environment that we are executing but the main configuration file will remain the same and that way we can ensure that all the environments will have same consistency in terms of your infrastructure setup the next question we have is your task with migrating your existing infrastructure from terraform version 0.11 to version 0.12 so what kind of considerations and steps would you uh, take? So whenever we are uh, upgrading our Terraform from one version to another version, we have to make sure that we update the syntax in the configurations file accordingly, address any deprecated features and uh, handle any cha breaking changes. So we have to make sure that we take care of this. And also we can utilize this command, which is a Terraform 0.1 to upgrade command to automatically handle some of these updates uh, for us okay so uh, these are the few of the things that we'll have to make sure that we keep in mind whenever we are upgrading from one version to another version the next question we have is explain a situation where you might need to use terraform taint and what effect it has on resources so terraform taint can be used whenever you want to destroy and recreate a resource so let's say for example you have an ec2 instance and uh, let's say the instance is corrupted I want to destroy that and launch a new instance. So we can make use of your Terraform Taint for that. So Terraform Taint mainly helps you to recreate your uh, resources. Okay, so um, could be for any reason the server is no longer working as expected. We can destroy that and recreate it by making use of your Terraform Taint. So with this, you'll be marking the resource as uh, tainted so that the next time when I do a Terraform apply, Terraform apply will know that a resource has been tainted and it will replace that with a, a stable resource for us. So use it when a resource needs to be replaced, such as when updating certain attributes that cannot be changed in place. The next question we have is your team is adopting GitLab CI/CD for auto automating Terraform work workflows. Describe how would you structure your CI/CD pipeline for Terraform, including key stages. So uh, with this, essentially, when we talk about your CI/CD stages, we'll have your init plan, we'll have the plan, and then the apply. So init is where we'll initialize your Terraform uh, configuration files. Plan will help us to generate a preview of the actions your Terraform is going to take. And then apply can be used to execute those uh, uh, plan for us. Okay. So other than this, it is also recommended that we use environment specific variables and then protect our sensitive data and also implement manual approval steps so you know uh, do not have auto approvals for your terraform apply always have a manual approval for any critical changes that we have okay so these are some of the recommendations that we'll have to keep in mind uh, when we start setting up your ci cd for your terraform execution so there you have it we have covered 15 scenario based interview questions that you can expect as part of terraform 
Um, this is something that you can definitely expect uh, uh, in terms of your DevOps interview on, on the Terraform tool. If you found the video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel for more um, insights on uh, DevOps. Um, until next time, happy learning.